In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing my own product, which is a breakout board for the Ender 3 S1. First off, if you've purchased one of these, thank you for supporting me and the channel, and I hope you really enjoy using it. You'll probably want to watch this video just so that you're installing things correctly and nothing goes wrong. I've installed it on both of these printers and I've been testing them out, and everything works great. And this is going to be kind of an overview of all the features and an installation guide. If you look at this build over here, you'll actually see that this is a Micro Swiss hot end and I'm actually using one of my modder boards attached to the side here. It's on there just like this and it's piggybacked onto the back of this stepper motor. I was able to do that because this modder board has the four hole pattern for a stepper motor. So if you use some spacers, you can just put this right on the back of a stepper motor. But once you've got that attached, you can convert basically any hot end over to a modder board hot end. And that allows you to install it onto an Ender 3 S1 like what you see here. So here you can see the stock Sprite extruder and it's got its regular breakout board on the back here. And that's something that we want to get rid of. So we're just going to undo all of the screws that hold it in place. You want to hold on to these screws because they'll be useful later. So just detach all of those and now we're going to unplug all of these connections. This will link to a website with installation instructions. And if you open it up, I've included a sticker in each box so you can scan that QR code and get some quick reference instructions. You've got the board here, and I also included a little kit that'll help you plug in your first fan. We're just gonna cut this zip tie and take off this protective cover here. And really the purpose of that cover is just to protect these pins. Then we're gonna take our modder board and just fit it in right here. And I'm going to install this bottom screw just to kind of help hold things in place a little bit. And I'm just going to tighten it down. And then I'm going to plug all of these connectors back in. Get our heater plugged in there. I plugged in the fan that's labeled F1 and that's this hot end heat sink fan. So this will spin. But I didn't include a port to plug this part cooling fan in. I recommend you upgrade this to a different part cooling fan because this one really doesn't do the job as well as it should. So I would just remove this by undoing the bolts here. Let's go over all the connections on here. So of course we've got the old connectors. The CR heat is for the old Creality heater. The CRTH is the old Creality thermistor. CR step is the Creality stepper motor plug. CR touch is for the CR touch. Um, this hot end doesn't have a CR touch installed onto it, but if you have one of those, just plug that right in. And then the CRH fan, that's the Creality hot end fan, which is this blower right here on the side. And then I don't have a CR part cooling fan on there. Then up top we have the thermistor, so that's just a regular thermistor plug. The heater cartridge plugs in right there. We've got our dual part cooling fan plugs. We've got a hot end fan. So if you replace this blower, you'll plug your hot end fan in up here instead. And I've got this plug for a third party stepper motor. So Creality uses this tiny stepper motor plug. It's a four pin plug, but nobody else uses one that's that small. What I've added up here is just the normal stepper motor plug. And I'll show you on a build where I use this port, but if you're just doing a drop in replacement for your Sprite hot end, you won't need to use this one. Then right here, we've got our 24 pin connector. That's kind of the main connector on this board. When you plug that in, it powers up all these other connectors. So the last thing you're gonna install on here is the 24 pin connector. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you do this step right because as you can see by this warning on the board, you need to put the key right here, otherwise the printer will die. These are open pin headers, so there's a lot of opportunity for you to plug this in incorrectly. So when you're installing this, you're gonna to wanna to take the extra time to make sure that it's plugged in in the right spot before you power it on. You're gonna to wanna to plug it in just like this, where you have the key right here. You see how this key is on the bottom? When I plug it in, it's gonna go just like this. You're gonna to wanna to double check and triple check to make sure you get it right. By all means, take your time on this step and if you need to get your flashlight out, um, and shine it in there just to make sure you've got the key in the right spot. Go ahead and do that. I'm looking into some different connector types that'll make this mistake harder to make. Basically, it won't let you plug it in incorrectly. But for now, we're just gonna have to be really careful with this and make sure we plug it in right. Now I'm gonna go over some ways that you can plug this in incorrectly just to make sure that we don't make those mistakes. One incorrect way to plug it in is 
if you plug it in backwards, it'll still plug in, but this will definitely be bad for your printer. Some other ways you can plug it in incorrectly is if you index it too high or too low. So here you can see it's almost like it's plugged in, but it's just that top row of pins that's making a connection, and you can see all these exposed pins down here. That's no good. And the opposite way of doing that is just like here, you can see I've got all these exposed pins. So these wires aren't making the right connections. If you want to join the Discord and post a picture of your setup and just kind of verify like, hey, is this plugged in right before you power your printer up, then uh, that would definitely be a good way to have someone double check your work. But you can see here, you want the key on this bottom side right where that arrow is pointing. Until I can find a better connector for that part, I want to make sure that everyone's being careful when they're doing that installation. All right, so now that you've got it installed with the connector in the right spot, you're going to want to take this printable support. Just head over to my website and you can download this. I think I'm going to upload it to Patreon just because that's a good place to host my files. Thingiverse is kind of buggy and stuff. So anyways, you're just going to take this, put it in place right here and take the screws out of the old strain relief and just thread those in up here. So we're just reusing those old screws and the threaded holes that are already on the Sprite hot end to get this to work. And with this little piece in place, you should no longer be able to remove this connector and that should keep everything in place so that you can safely operate the machine. Once you've got this piece installed, do one last inspection and make sure the key is in the right spot you can just barely kind of see the key there, and you can see the exposed ends of the wires right here. It should look pretty much like this. But once you've confirmed that everything's right, you can install it onto your 3D printer and get printing. So with these solderless splice connectors, I was able to plug this in, and I've got this nice delta fan that can provide a ton of airflow for my part cooling needs. On this machine, I've installed a Volcano ceramic heater core and a Volcano CHT nozzle from Bontech. The CHT nozzle is that high flow nozzle from Bontech that has the three lobed intake that splits up the filament and gets it to melt faster. So I'll be benchmarking this later. You can see it was pretty easy to plug it into this motor board. I just put some ferrule ends and plugged it in up there and it's been working great. Also, you can see the thermistor just plugs in to this. For this part, I actually pulled off the plastic housing for that connector so that I could just plug this straight in there. And once your wiring has been all tidied up, you can install one of these cover plates. This is also available for download. So you just install this up top here, and that covers up the PCB. It has two purposes. It's functional because it protects the PCB from being touched and you don't want to touch it with metal objects because then you might create shorts that could damage your 3D printer. But also it's kind of a decorative piece so you can print this out in whatever color that you want to have on your printer and that'll just be kind of an accent color. And that doesn't interfere with the use of any of this other stuff so it's just kind of out of the way. Now if we look at this machine over here, this is showcasing some of the more advanced mods that you can tackle with this modder board. So you can see I've attached it to the back side of this stepper motor this black bundle here is just covering up all of the wires. Basically these wires ended up being really long because they're about a meter designed to go all the way back to your 3D printer mainboard. But it just had to cover a short distance here. I might have to find a source for some shorter stepper motor cables and that kind of stuff. But for now I've just kind of tucked the wires away there. Here's the motor board. It's using the same cable clamp here to make sure this connector doesn't come loose. Yeah, I'm using pretty much all these different connectors that are provided at the top of the motor board to run this hot end. I'm using the um, stepper motor cable that plugs in right here. You'll notice it's actually missing the shroud for that connector. You can actually pull these off if you're careful. So basically you just kind of grab them and, and yank them off. And that's something that I do pretty frequently with these type of connectors. Basically you can just pull them off. Now it's just these two bare pins and I can actually flip that connector around, so plug it in in reverse. And that's a quick and easy way to reverse the polarity of those two pins, because now when the connector plugs in, it'll be flipped 180 degrees. This is a practice that I don't generally recommend, but you can see I've removed the housing for this stepper motor driver because I had to flip it 180 degrees, but I kind of mangled it up when I was uninstalling it, so 
if you flip the stepper driver 180 degrees, it actually reverses the direction of the stepper motor. Since this hot end has different gearing than the stock Sprite hot end, I had to flip that around to get it to work. But it's working now, so that's all I really wanted to accomplish with this build. And everything's held together pretty nicely, so I don't see this coming loose. I had both of these printers running all day when I was attending Earth, so I know that they work reliably. And at the end of the day, this is a pretty simple circuit where not a whole lot can go wrong. It's just facilitating a bunch of electrical connections using appropriately sized wires and connectors. So it's not too much of a surprise to me that everything works. But I'm excited to see what all of you do with these boards. I mean, the whole idea here is to make modding easier and more accessible. So are you going to go with the standard build that basically just extends your regular breakout board to having more ports? Or do you think you're going to go with something crazy and put a completely different style of hot end on your 3D printer? Let me know in the comments what you're going to do with it, or maybe post some pictures on our Discord. It'd be great to see what you guys are all working on. I've still got a few of the first edition boards left on my website, and I'm setting up large-scale manufacturing. One of the things that I never want to compromise on is the quality of the products. So in addition to having testing requirements for the manufacturer, I'm also going to be doing secondary testing in my own facilities just to make sure that everything that I'm shipping out is good to go. Plus with Mr. Clicky, um, well about Mr. Clicky, we actually had a little bit of an accident at Earth. It kind of exploded. Long story short, I plugged Mr. Clicky into a 24 volt power supply when he was only rated for 12 volts but I'm going to be fixing them up. All in all, I've been having a lot of fun with my modder boards. You can see here I'm really using it to its fullest potential, just using all of these new plugs and running a completely different hot end. This is kind of what I envisioned um, being the maximum of what was possible with this board. I'll be doing an individual review on this NG extruder. It's a pretty cool hot end. And this Ender 3 S1 Plus, which is basically a larger Ender 3 S1 and I've just put a couple small upgrades on it and you know we'll check it out and see how it works. I also had this one printing all day at Earth and it's working fine too. It's just not quite as interesting as this one over here. You know I'm probably one of the first people to put this kind of hot end on an Ender 3 S1 just because of the capabilities I get with this board. If you want to reuse this part cooling fan there's an option for you. And that's what this solderless fan connector kit is for. And with this kit, I can basically just cut the wires off of a fan and rewire them to the standard type of JST connector that's at the end of this little wire. So if you want to wire up the stock fan, just get the two black leads and put the butt connector over both of them. And make sure they're inserted all the way. Um, basically, about at the halfway point, there's a little metal plate in there and when you squeeze this button down it's going to squish that plate and cut through the wires insulator and kind of clamp onto the wire. They make special pliers for this but if you take any normal pair of pliers you should be able to get it to work. So just go like this, give it a squeeze, make sure it's pushed all the way down, give it a little tug to make sure that the wire is being held onto properly. And just like that, you've made an electrical connection there. No soldering required. I left these wires probably a little shorter than I should have. I wasn't really planning on reusing this fan. I was just cutting it and getting rid of it at the time. So again, you're just going to want to shove these wires in that you want to connect together. Look through the clear base and make sure that the wires are inserted all the way. And um, it looks like on the fan wire it's able to go all the way to the end but on the connector wire it only goes about halfway but the wire is stripped so the the conductive part of the wire is actually sticking up further than the red piece would indicate so when that's all ready just go ahead and pinch that and that should do it so then again we'll tug on these a little bit just to make sure that they're connected there. So at this point I'll be able to plug in the old fan into the new board. But again I'd recommend just going with something completely different. Um, this fan is quite loud for how little air it moves so that's a good upgrade for your printer. You'll get better part cooling and the thing will run quieter. Once I've got that new connector spliced on I can plug it into either one of these part cooling fan plugs. They both go to the same place they're just in parallel. 
The reason why I added two of them is because a lot of times people like to plug two fans into their part cooling system. So just like that, I've got it all wired up. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you have any more questions about the motherboard or about either of these two printers, let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next episode.